You can download the art scene in the video for free, link in the description. For a simple shooting system in Godot, add a 2D scene, right click it and hit rename, rename it to gun, add another node 2D, rename it to rotation offset, this will handle the rotation of the gun, add a sprite 2D as a child, add the art that can be downloaded for free, link in the description, I'll set the texture to nearest as I'm using pixel art, then I'll go to region, enable, hit edit region, scroll in with the mouse wheel and select the gun. While the sprite is selected, hit Ctrl or Command plus C, and then Ctrl or Command plus V to paste it. Rename it to Shadow, go to the Visibility and change the Modulate to Black, and then set the Transparency to 55, and go to Ordering and set the Z Index to negative 1 so it appears behind the main sprite. Select the Sprite 2D node, add a Marker 2D to it, and rename it to Shoot Pause. Reposition it to 6 by negative 2. This will be the location where we spawn our bullets, so you can move this around anywhere you need to change that location. Add a Timer node to the scene, rename it to Shoot Timer, and enable One Shot. This timer will be used to keep track of how much time must pass before we can shoot again. Save the scene, then select the gun node and add a script. Inside we will create on ready variables, each grabbing the rotation offset node, the sprite shadow node, and the shoot pause node. We use this on ready method for grabbing the nodes as it ensures that if we move these nodes around to the scene tree, we only have to set their path once, opposed to multiple times within the script. We also add another two variables, one that defines the amount of time between each shot, and another which defines if the player is able to shoot. These variables will work together in the script. Inside the ready function, we will add the wait time to the timer. We do it this way with a variable in the case that you have multiple types of guns and would like different amounts of time between each shot. Within in the built-in physics process function, we will write the rotation code for the rotation offset node and for the shadow node. Setting the rotation offset to a lerp angle, we make the target rotation global mouse position minus global position dot angle to grab the angle that looks towards the mouse. As for the shadow node, we instead set its position to be an offset of 2 to the left and down. We add the dot rotated to ensure that this offset is consistent with the rotation offset's rotation. If you want to change what the gun is pointing towards, simply replace the get global mouse position. Next, for the input of shooting, we need to add the input method method to shoot, go to project, project settings, and select input map, hit add a new action, add a new action called shoot, then press the plus, select the drop down for mouse buttons, and select the left mouse button and hit ok. Inside the code we'll check if the shoot button has been pressed, and that the player can shoot, if so, then we will set can shoot to false, and activate the shoot timer. Next we'll add a custom function called shoot, and call it inside of this input check. We will then select the shoot timer, go to node, signals, and select the timeout by double clicking it, then hit connect. Inside we can set can shoot to true, so it resets our shooting. Now before we add our shooting logic to the underscore shoot function, we first need to create the bullet scene. Add a new scene, use a sprite 2D node as the core, rename it to bullet, set its texture to the art that can be downloaded for free, link in the description. Set its texture filter to nearest as we're using pixel art, then set the ordering to negative 1, so that way the bullet appears behind the gun. Enable region, hit edit region, and select the bullet sprite. Add another sprite to the scene, apply the same texture, then go to region, enable region, and hit edit region. Select the correct shadow, then go to visibility, and hit show behind parent so it's behind the bullet sprite. While selected, hit Control or Command plus D to duplicate it. Rename it to Shadow. Set its Z index to negative 1, so it appears behind the other red gradient. Then go to Visibility and change the Modulate to Black. Add an Animation Player node. Create a new animation. Call it Appear. Select the Bullet Sprite. Go to Transform and set its scale to 0 by 0 and hit Keyframe. Then set the total time of the animation to 0 0.2 and move the playhead to the very end. Reset the scale to 1 by 1 and keyframe it again. Then drag the playhead back to 0. Go to Visibility and change the Modulate to be invisible on the A keyframe. Drag it to the end and hit Reset, then keyframe again. Hold shift and left click the two properties on the left, then right click the easing and set it to ease out. Left click anywhere within the animation spot, deselect, then select the right side and hold shift to select both and set the easing to ease in. To make sure this animation plays as soon as the bullet spawns, activate autoplay on load. Go to animation and hit duplicate, rename it to remove, then go to scale and set it to 1 by 1, and then the final, set it to 0 by 0. Do the same with the modulate, basically reversing it. Finally go to the animation player and set the speed scale to 2. Add a raycast 2D node to the scene. This is what will handle all the collision for the bullet. Set its target position to 8 by 0 and set its transform position to negative 4 by 0. Finally, make sure to enable hit from inside. If you don't enable this, then if the bullet spawns inside of a wall, it will not detect that wall until it exits it. Add a timer node, rename it to distance timeout, set the wait time to 10 seconds, enable one shot, and auto start. This time will be used to remove the bullet after a certain amount of time has passed. That way, we can avoid the bullet going infinitely into the void and taking up resources when we don't need it to. Finally, save the scene and add a script to the bullet. Go back to the gun scene and go to its script. We'll create a constant that stores the bullet scene inside of a preload. This will make spawning the bullet a bit faster as the scene will already be ready and loaded when the gun enters the scene. Go to the shoot function, create a variable that is equal to an instance of the bullet scene. We do this to create a new copy of the bullet scene. That way we can alter specific values in each bullet independently from one another. We will then set the global position and rotation of the bullet to the global position and rotation of the shoot pause marker node. You can also set the bullet speed here if you like. Keep 
in mind that we'll need to add the speed variable into the bullet, which we'll do soon. Finally, we grab our parent and add the bullet to the scene. We grab parent so that way the bullet isn't dependent on our gun scene, meaning that if the gun moves, it'll move the bullet as well, which we don't want, so we add the bullet to our parent. Inside the bullet script, add three on ready variables, one for the shadow, one for the animation player, and another for the raycast. We will add an additional variable for the speed of the bullet. Inside the built-in physics process function, we'll use this line of code to move the bullet. The vector two of one by zero will move the bullet to the right. Then we use dot rotated, which will make the bullet move based on its rotation. And considering that the rotation uses the right side of the bullet to point in the desired direction, we therefore use vector two of one by zero to move in that direction. To further understand this, experiment with different numbers in this vector. Next, we multiply this by speed, and we then multiply this by delta to ensure that the bullet moves at the same speed no matter the game's FPS. We use the same logic for offsetting the shadow as the bullet scene's shadow. Next, we check if the raycast is colliding, and if so, then we run the remove animation. To queue free this bullet after the animation has completed, select the animation player, go to nodes, signals, and double click the animation finish signal and connect it. Inside, check for the animation remove and queue free. Finally, to have the timer remove the bullet after a certain amount of time has passed, go to the timer and connect its timeout signal. Just in case the bullet is still on the screen, we'll run the animation as well. In the case that the bullet is destroying itself on the player's collision shape, add this line of code, constant is player equal true, for the character body, rigid body, static body, or area 2D that is used for the player collision. Then, in the bullet scene, we can check if this constant doesn't exist in the collider, so that the bullet can only be destroyed on objects that aren't the player.